Hello, I'm Atuba Judge and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth today. Now, this is a new week and I know God is about to do great things in your life. Praise God. See, He's always about doing great things in our lives because He is good. <laughs> Praise God. And, and there is no way you'll be connected with God and you will not experience great things in your life. Someone says, oh... But, but, but I'm a Christian, but all my life I've been experiencing one challenge or the other, one challenge or the other. Listen to me. Check what you have been feeding on. That's the truth. What you are feeding on is going to directly influence your experiences in life. Now what I mean, what you've been feeding on, I'm talking about the word you have been eating. Praise God. I'm not talking about physical food now. But this is the truth. What you, are, what you are feeding on, if the word you are receiving is not good word, it will influence your experience in life. Now, there is one thing to hear a good message or listen to a good preacher. And there is another thing for you to apply your mind to that message. You can be in a service or you can be watching me right now and say, wow, wonderful, good, wow. And then after today, or after this moment where you finish watching it, all you can think about is, I had a good preacher preach today. Oh, I had a preacher shared some wonderful things today. Okay, what are those wonderful things? I, no, I just like the way he was communicating the word. What was he communicating? You don't know what has happened. You met something good, but you did not apply your mind to them. Now, that's what happens to most believers. They gather for this wonderful meeting, listen to this great teacher or this great preacher preach, and they are so excited. Wow! But remember what Jesus said concerning the sower and the seed. He tells us how different he says, some fell by the wayside. Now, what happened to those ones? When they received the word, they were excited. See, but you see, because there was no root in them, they have a problem. So easily the word is thrown off. No root. See, now then, he said, he, he gave us different, he said, the ones, the ones that planted among tongues, they are excited, they hear the word of God, they want to apply the word of God. But the moment the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches, once they come, they choke the word. See? So that's someone who hears the word. He's excited. He feels, man, I've seen something new. And then guess what? Maybe he hears the word concerning finances. Oh, how God can do miracles. How when you're patient with God, God's going to bless you. And then, all right. Now he's, wow, I know what to do now. I've seen what to do. I'm excited. And then guess what? He leaves the service. Monday morning, the creditor calls. I'm coming for my money. Hey, ha, ah, mm, what do I do now? What do I do now? Do I run? Do I pray? Do I borrow? Do I see? What's going on? Persecution have come for the word's sake. Anxiety has come. And now you don't know what to do. You say, but what, what was I supposed to do? Listen, you are supposed to be like a lion that has found its prey. What does that lion do? It holds on, it keeps its focus, holds on to that prey. It doesn't matter what is happening around you. He doesn't matter. And that lion doesn't care about everything that's going on. He holds on to that prey until he's got full control of it and he enjoys it. Praise God. Yeah, that's what you do. When the word of God comes, and you know this is good. Listen, God will always give you solution. Heaven is never in lack of solution. And the spirit of God will always give it to you. Question, will you follow through with that solution? Or will you get offended by the way? Jesus said concerning that seed, I think that's the one that was sown among um, sown on stony ground. He said, when persecution comes, for the word's sake, by and by they are offended. 
why were they offended or why do they get offended? You see, because you, you are in a challenge. I know this truth, but then I wish I had known it earlier and I had time to apply it so that it start working for me before this challenge comes. But now the challenge has come and I'm looking at it like, why, why would God put me through all these things? That's, that's how a lot of people think. Uh, if God loves me, why would he let me go through all these things? He, he, what do you mean, why did he let you go? You went into this, those things. Say, so why did he let you go through all those things? And if God really loves me, he will make, he will make me stop some things that I'm doing. You're not serious. <laughs> you see, you are the one that will stop it. And I've tried to stop. Now, you, you ask God for grace. Now, after asking God for grace, you don't turn into a lazy attitude. And, and wake, one day I'll just wake up and maybe say, I want to stop smoking, for example. Or I want to stop a bad attitude. And then you say, oh God, I really want to stop this bad attitude. And then at the smell of the temptation, you go back into it. Until the day you make up your mind and put your foot down. This way, no more. And I always say this, repentance is not just about saying, I will not do this thing again. Repentance is when you see what you are supposed to be doing. Now you realize, oh, I'm in the wrong boat. So what do you do? Turn away from the wrong and get in to the right. That's what repentance is. So many people just do, okay. I'm not going to smoke again. I'm not going to show that bad attitude. I'm not going to get angry again. So what are you going to do? Nothing. I just will not do that thing again. And then in no time, they are back to it because they truly didn't repent. Praise God. I pray the Spirit of God would help you and bring you understanding in these things. Praise God. Listen, I sense in my spirit that there's a gathering taking place. And that's because the Spirit of God is establishing His kingdom on the earth. So you will soon begin to see changes. Already that started happening. Changes in society, changes. Now what's going to bring about those changes? God is raising His sons. I know we've been talking about angels and angelic assistants. Now listen to me. Angels are also responsible for soul winning and also for cleaning the church. Listen, let me show you scripture. And then will he send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds from the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of the heaven. Who's going to do this? He said, God will send his angels. I'll read it again. And then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds, from the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of heaven. Jesus is coming. And let me tell you this truth. You know, sometimes there are certain things we have learned from the Lord that it's difficult communicating them. Because when you communicate certain truths, people get emotional. He said, I, I, I think I should read, because Jesus was talking about the end time in, in this chapter. And let me, let me read verse 26 into 27. Oh, let me read from verse 24 to 27. But in those days after the tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars of heaven will fall and the power of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with great power and glory. Right? And then he says, and then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds, from the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of the heaven. They are, now, I want you to understand this. 
he will gather his elect from the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of the heaven, bringing them as one. Now this is, this is big. This is another day's talk. Praise God. Now watch this. Let me, let me show you another scripture. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 41. Matthew 13 and verse 41. Now, Jesus just spoke about the parable of the tares, of the tares, yeah. And then, let me just go straight to verse 41. He says, The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness. Did you see that? He says, The Son of Man will send his angels. So the other one we see that the angels were responsible in gathering the elect from the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of the heaven. Not one elect will be missed. Now over here we're seeing another thing Jesus said I will send the angels to do. And what is that? The Son of Man will send his and they will gather out of his kingdom. See, Now this is gathering in. Now, the, the other one was gathering in. This is gathering out. It says, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness. And we cast them into the furnace of fire. You can't hide from this then. Think about it. You can't hide from it. You can't say, oh, I'll hide under us. You can't hide. Now, in, 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 in both cases, one, he's gathering the elect. The angels will gather the elect. Then here, the angels will gather the, the offensive ones. See, the, the spots, the wrinkles, the deaths. See, all those things are human beings. So he will gather them and take them out of his kingdom. Did you see that? Angels are responsible for this. How are the angels going to know the elect of God? And how are the angels going to know those that offend? I'll tell you how they will know. By your words. Now this is where the Holy Spirit comes in. You see, you, I was sharing something with you very important last week. And I, and I pray you got it. I pray you understood what I was saying last week. Listen, when you begin to live your life carelessly. See, when the rapture of the church is going to take place. It's not going to take place by surprise. To some, and to many, it will be by surprise. But those who look for him, it will not be by surprise. Why? You see, because I'll give you an example. The ninth, the death angel walked through the land of Egypt and killed all the firstborn. Remember, God had spoken to the children of Israel. And he told them, look, tonight, stay indoors and you know god is so amazing he didn't just tell them to stay indoors guess what he gave them activity to do oh kill the ram share it make sure every god actually said make sure every household have enough if you're too small then join another household just make sure you are together that was the instruction that came from the lord to his people the egyptians did not hear that instruction now that one God gave it by a prophet. In this day, God will not speak by a prophet. Man, tell a kosa prakacha. No prophashikale. Lebarusiki. Listen to me. No prophet will be given this assignment. So you know why? Because every prophet will have to respond to the assignment himself for him to be saved. Our time is up today. Listen, may God bless you today and help you open your eyes to know truth. Oh, Reba Sotenekeba. Be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.